Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In today's video, we'll be making a chat system as requested from my last few videos. Quite a few people wanted some form of a chat system where you can, in a room, send messages and everyone else receives those messages and it pops up on the UI. Obviously, this isn't going to be a very long video showing you everything you can do. It'll just be a quite a short video showing you how to set it up and get it working, hopefully to a point where you guys can then take it from there and do whatever modifications you want to it. I hope you guys are looking forward to it. Let's get in. Okay, so this video will be split up into three parts. Part one, I'll be showing you my project setup, what I've got pre-made. There's not really that much at all, but I'll be showing you anyway, and as well as my settings on the network manager. Step two, we'll be actually coding the chat system. And if you need any of this stuff I'm talking about, you can get it down below on my GitHub page. The link is in the description below. Then finally, for step three, it'll be actually testing it, showing it working on a second client, and then maybe even a third. So yeah, that'll be it for the video. I hope you guys enjoy. Let's get started. So step one, the setup. I've duplicated the folder from last time, ownership, so now we have a chat folder, and I've changed the scene to be called scene chat, and then in build settings, I've added it as the build scene instead of the other one, so that when we build, we can then go to the scene. Then in scripts, just make an empty script called chat behavior, and we'll code it in a minute. Then in prefabs, I've got a player prefab, but it's different to last time. I've removed the uh, script that moves when I press spacebar, and instead I've added a chat behavior, which is the script I just told you about, but don't worry about these fields, we're going to write it in the video. Uh, just stick it on here anyway as an empty script. Then beneath this, we've got the chat UI as an empty game object to hold the UI. Then we have the actual canvas, which I've changed to scale with screen size, and then match my resolution with height. Then I've got two elements, text, and this is effectively where the chat is going to be. Now, technically, if you have enough messages, it will go off the top and maybe you want it to, you know, be a certain size somewhere else and it might scroll differently. You know, that's all up to you guys. But for now, I'm just going to have it as a chat like this as a text box. And then below it, we've got an actual input field using text mesh pro. And effectively, we can click on this type text in and press enter. And when we press enter, it actually sends it to the server. The server then relays that to all the clients. So that's what we're going to be doing. Hope you guys look forward to it. Let's go to the coding part. So for step two, we'll be coding the chat behavior. If you had any problems with the last step or even this step, then feel free to go to my GitHub, download it and have a look through at your own pace. But anyway, uh, the first thing to remember is actually to disable the chat UI. Make sure that's disabled by default because you'll see we actually enable it here. So have reference to the chat UI as a game object, the chat text so that we can actually set the text on the screen and then the input field so we can read and reset the text that they typed in for the message. Then over here, we actually want an event and make sure it's static and it passes through a string called on message. Um, what this is, the reason we need this is because um, each player will have their own chat behavior that they own and they can do their own uh, commands through. Okay, they, to do a command, you have to have authority over the object. So we'll have lots of different chat behaviors, well, one for each player, but we only want to send the messages and update the UI for our own one. There's no need to do it on all the others because they're disabled by default. So. We have a static event and we'll be calling that down here. So on start, on start authority, sorry, gets called on start for an object that you own. So because there'll be two, uh, there'll be two starts, there'll be one for mine and one for the second person who joins or a third for a third person who joins. I only want to actually enable the UI for mine. So only do it on start authority, which is on start for one that I have authority over. So basically turn on my UI and I only want to do this once, only in mine do I subscribe to when a message happens, okay? And then equally on destroy, so when this object gets destroyed, um, if we don't have authority over this object, then we don't care when it's destroyed, really. But if we do have authority, then uh, unsubscribe. So this is where we subscribe to the event and unsubscribe. Uh, and I just add this on because I don't want it to be called on the server, just call it on the client, okay? The next we have... Um, handle new message. So this is what happens when a message happens. So, but we subscribe to call this and unsubscribe this call. And what actually happens is, well, we just append the text. So like, imagine if the text was, you know, hello. And then when we add to it, the message message might be goodbye. It would just be goodbye like this. But what we actually do later down here is we add a new line. So it effectively goes, hello, goodbye, like this. Obviously it would look like this in the chat. Um, but in string form, it would actually look like this, uh, slash n, okay? If you do a slash n in chat like this, or in text, then it means a new line, okay? In case you didn't know that. Um, so yeah, every time a new message comes through, just add it to the end of our chat message text. And then um, on the client, we have a method to send, okay? So when we send the message, we say, only if we pressed enter, continue, 
and only if the message is not null or white space. If they didn't press enter or the message is null or white space, then don't do anything. So the way that actually gets called, once you've written this method, if you just get down to this point where you've got these lines, or even just the method in general with the uh, send and passing in a string, you can go ahead to your player now and go down to your input chat or your input field, okay? And there's an event on edit string. Now that gets called in two different uh, circumstances. It gets called when you press enter. So if you type something and press enter, it gets called. But also if you just deselect the string, I think uh, deselect and on end edit gets called. Um, at least in my experience, I think it has. So what I say is whenever we end edit, we call chat behavior dot send. Okay, which then checks if we pressed enter to know did we end because we pressed enter or was it some other reason? Okay, so if we pressed enter, then um, as long as there's a message, we send it. So we do that via command. Uh, remember, commands are called on the client uh, and then they run on the server. So we're telling the server, please send this message, which is the text. Now, actually, um, I could just use message to be honest. It's the same thing in the end. Okay. And then we actually clear the text input field so that obviously when you send a message, it then clears it for the next message. Now this actual command, what happens? Well, we take in a message and we format it, right? The server takes what you typed and formats it. This is where you'd validate, right? If you wanted to validate to, for example, you might want to um, not send it to everyone if it has profanity or whatever you want, right? Um, or maybe if they've spe sent too many messages too quickly, you don't want to send it, okay? But the way we're doing it is just, no matter what, they send it to everyone, but it formats it differently. It actually takes their message and changes it to be open square bracket, the connection ID, closed square bracket, because we don't have usernames for now, so I'm just going to use their ID to differentiate them, and then colon, and then their message, okay? Then client RPC, which is what this calls, okay? This gets called on all clients. All clients are told... Um, here's the message and this message is actually this string so it's the actual fully formatted thing and what it does is it invokes the event on message which we use up here and it tells everyone hey uh, add a new line and then the message then obviously what it actually does is it just adds that on and now if we actually go back over and make sure you've got everything plugged in so your chat UI is plugged in right there your chat text which is here and the input field which is here once those are all plugged in and you've made sure you've got your event done on the chat input, you can then actually go back to Unity, build and run, and then go test it out. So in Unity, I'll become a LAN host. So then on the built version, I'll become a LAN client. We're both in the same lobby. Ignore the spheres. You could get rid of those if you wanted to. I'm going to say hi. Okay. And I'm user one. I've got ID one because this is zero. This is one. And it says hi. And I come back over here and I say you know, goodbye. I come back over here and both clients actually receive all the messages and because the server checked who it is sending the message it then told everyone okay user one said this but user zero said this right and i can send like quite a lot of messages there and then everyone receives them it's synced pretty much instantly it's a uh, really simple chat but it works and you guys can take it from there obviously one difference is if i stop and reconnect i don't get the chat history though it still works to continue um, it actually does say I'm someone else because my connection ID changes, but that doesn't matter because um, ideally instead of an ID, you'd be using a name or something and your name wouldn't change. Uh, but yeah, it works. And you guys can obviously, as I said, expand it further. You could add the, make sure the server, for example, stores the message history. So when someone new joins, you could send them the message history. That's up to you. Um, another, I think, another thing you could do is make it so there's some commands in there. Maybe... Um, it adds a profanity filter, you know, you, you asterisk out words that are swearing. But usually in games where that happens, the server doesn't do that. It's actually the client. There's usually a setting and the setting will filter it before it actually sends it back to your chat. But yeah, that's it for this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, let me know down below. Leave a like and subscribe. It would mean a lot. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching and goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. Special thanks to Liz Kimber, Josh Folsom, Beard or Die, Dustin Miller, Francisco Diaz, Rec. Yuris Letter, Hades Zorko, Rene, Budere, and Memory Baldwin. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord, as well as our website. If you could help us out by following on any of those, checking any of those out, that'd be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.